What's up, everybody? Welcome to the round 22 player ratings video. <laughs> a very uncomfortable video to be doing. It's one of those videos you, you sort of get there, you set up, and you're like, oh gosh, can't wait for this to be over. Um, but nonetheless, it must be done. It's all part of the experience. It's all part of the documentation of the journey to the next premiership, whenever that is going to be. <laughs> if you've never been to a play ratings video, welcome. Welcome to the Blue Broad channel. What I like to do in these videos is just start the conversation about just what we thought about the players and, and how they went on the day. Um, I give a rating between one and 10 relative to uh, the context of you know their role, how they performed it, their seniority, and therefore the expectations of the senior player, their leadership qualities, um, where they're at in their career and, and sort of go from there. These are not right, these are not wrong, they're not official. Um, it's one person's view of 22 players. So I have to be wrong, I must be wrong somewhere. Um, so that's where you come in. Um, when you see a rating and you hear one, you think it needs to be altered higher or lower, just let me know in the comments below and I can make adjustments. And then at the end of the year, we will crown a champion. Um, if you are returning, welcome back. Thanks for your support. You know how this goes. Um, let's just, uh, <laughs> why don't we just get stuck right into it? We'll start with how the team was named. We've got uh, Nick Newman, Weedering and Plowman. Oh, I didn't think he had the worst game, Nick Newman, early, especially early on in the piece. Um, I thought he was he was okay. Um, I just he he faded away, and I guess when I talk about leaders and experience and who's going to step up on a day that we needed people to step up, he was he was definitely one of them. Um, but I don't think he did that. I don't think anyone any of them did. If I'm being dead honest, so. Um, I didn't think he got the job done on the day for what he's capable of and, and therefore I gave him a four. Weedering, I thought he started brilliantly. I thought he was actually dominating Charlie Dixon. Um, unfortunately, the damn wall broke and uh, Dixon got off the leash and ended up kicking four goals, I think it was, in the end. Yeah, four goals straight. I mean, they were, they were vulture goals. The game was dead. How much of that do you put onto Weedering? I don't know. I, I struggled with this one. I, I really did want to give him a pass mark and just a five, but I gave him a four. We'll leave it at that. Um, by the way, there won't be too many passes today. Just um, just a heads up. Plowman, he was playing early on. Georgie Artis, I thought he started well on him. Again, I thought everyone started well. First quarter, we were solid. Um, it's a terrible kick to Lockie O'Brien in the third, which was a turnover. So the, the, the problem... The problem we have, at the, one of the many problems we have on the field is we, we look to switch the ball, which is exciting, but we just can't execute our skills. And this was one of them. I mean, they all did it, but this was one of them. That We switch the ball, Plowman gets it, just a, a regulation kick to O'Brien up on the wing, misses the target, turnover, Bergman picks it up to Ladham's goal, mark inside 50. And yeah, it's just, Lockie Plowman's an experienced player. He's not a kid anymore. Like I put expectations on him because he's a senior player, and he just doesn't didn't get a job done today. He kicked it down Willem Drew's throat. Fourth quarter, nine twenty to go. Just I just I really struggle to watch the senior players, um, you know, fail to execute simple skill moves. And you know, I gave Plowman a three. Saad Kemp Williamson. Saad, I didn't notice him too much in the first quarter. I didn't know, was he playing on Fantasia? Was it a lockdown role? Uh, second quarter, four minutes, 20 to go. Poor kick forward to Charlie Kerno. Um, he had a better third quarter and a better second half. Um, he let Mays mark that mark in the goal square with nine minutes to go in the fourth. Uh, I don't know if something's up with Adam Saad. Is he injured? I've been saying it for a few weeks. There's something about his last month. It just, he has not played with the same spark an energy uh, that he was at the start of the year. And I just expected him to be getting better as the year got on. And it just didn't happen. I gave him a three for his game. I expect more from him on a day like that because he was a, he's a senior player. He's a marquee player. Brody Kemp, good to see him debut. That was exciting. I, I thought he looked really solid early in the piece. Didn't notice him too much afterwards, but you I mean, you just got to get the game into the kid. You want to see him at the level. I think these games are really important for him and, you know, Corey Durden and even Josh Honey, just so they can see the speed of the game and put something in their mind for preseason so they know, you know, what are they working towards? Like, you know, what's their goal? They want to play for senior football. It's important for them to get these reps in, especially, uh, you know, in a hostile environment like Adelaide and 
playing against Port Adelaide over there. So, um, I mean, I just gave Kemp a pass, Mark. Just, you know, no expectations on the kid. And I thought he he was okay. Uh, Willow, didn't notice much of him in the first quarter. He kicked that ball out, uh, deliberate out of bounds. Uh, second quarter, seven minutes to go. He makes poor decisions at times. He, you just wonder. I remember he got... He got chased down. I think it was in the fourth. And it's just like, Willow, what are you doing, mate? You, you just got to have the awareness there. And just wasn't... I just didn't get from Willow what I would have hoped. I gave him a four. Noons, Dow, Murphy. Noons, I thought he started well everywhere for the... Uh, in that first quarter, he had six early touches. Um, and, then, and then he just has these patches where he makes poor decisions. There was a passage of play. It might have been in the third... The handball needed to go inboard in the corridor. He chose to, I think it was Dow that it was going to go to. He chose to not go that handball. He just makes the wrong decision seemingly at that wrong time. And, you know, senior player, not good enough. I, You know, he's better than that. I gave him a three. Dow, um, thought he was solid, especially in that first half. He kept going. He showed those flashes, the step through and um, tackled a little bit. You know, two tackles. He had the 18 touches in the end. He was he was okay. I didn't hate his game, but ultimately I just, it was tough. I was tossed up between a four and a five and on a day like that, I just erred on the side of, of, um, you know, not being, you know, generous. So I gave him a four. Murph, first, uh, sorry, final game, started really well. Nine touches in the first quarter. It was good to see him play with some freedom mentally and he found something, you know, the game has definitely gone past him as we, we've said all year, but he was able to find something. Um, I gave him a six for his game. He, uh, he laid, uh, what was it, six, what was it, five tackles, uh, 24 touches, just got in the, got in and amongst it, and it was a good tribute game for himself. He represented himself in his final game in, in a way that he should be proud of, and, you know, I've said everything that needs to be said about Murph, been saying it for years, so um, I gave him a six for his game. Ed Kerno, Eddie Betts, Corey Durden. Kerno, he was, he was quiet in the first, I thought. Two turnovers uh, in a row to start the second quarter. It wasn't great. I, I didn't find Ed's game to be above a pass mark for his the standards that he has set for himself. Works hard. We know that. He always does. So 22 touches. Laid the two tackles. So probably one of a, a few more there. But I gave him a four for his game. Eddie Betts, you know, lively when near the ball, but just didn't get anywhere near it. And for a guy that brings us the, uh, the pressure, he didn't lay a tackle for the day. That's just really poor. Um, he's better than that. I gave him a two for his game. Durds, it was good to see Corey play. It was it was really good. It was, a, you know, obviously um, got a, a, a connection with him, sponsoring him. Um, got to meet him and, you know, his dad and, and, and whatnot. And he's um, one thing that's always shown through for me with, with Corey is he's, he's relentless. He's relentless. Um, he might not get a lot of the ball. That'll come. You can't teach that mentality of wanting to hurt your opponent you can't teach that um you, if you like he's got a really solid foundation with that mentality the rest will come with match time and fitness and um, more exposure at the level um that moment where he stepped through and he got pinned by a lira lira i mean yeah he like it didn't come off but you'll love to see that i hope that he regains that confidence to keep trying those things and just figure out when to go when to not and I hope he doesn't go into his shell I don't think he will he's a, he's a little he's, he's a he's a pocket rocket this kid um love the way he goes about it he, he just sprints him and honey have this trait where they sprint with every effort it's who would have thought effort um hit that corridor kick in the third quarter with 11 to go which was nice um, obviously sets up that honey goal earlier in the game as well. And look, I gave him a five for his game. Obviously, you know, things to work on. But it was it was a debut with along with Brody Kemp. I just you know, let him go out there and, and get a feel for it. So I'm excited to follow the journey with, with him and, you know, throughout his whole career and be sponsoring him and, until he, re, he until he retires. McGovern, Kaspolt, Kerno. McGovern started off okay with the goal. He missed directly in front in the third quarter. I like... The one thing about Mitch, you can criticize him all, all you like, but the one thing about Mitch is he's always been able to kick the set shots straight. And as soon as he's missing that one directly in front, I start thinking, oh my God, what's he good for? No, but he, look, he provided an option. He took a few marks around the ground. He looks okay when he has the ball, but you know, first game back in a while, what kicked one goal too, but no, I didn't think he got his job done. I gave him a four. Casbolt, you know what? Say what you want. As much as it, you know, it, it it was 
frustrating to see him out there because you just sort of you just sort of know when he's playing we're not going to be at our best. Um, but to his credit, did his job. Came in half contests, brought the ball to ground, threw his body around, whatever. He did his thing. I actually thought he did his thing. Um, I gave him a five for his game. This was not the game to to lash into Levi. And I know he gets criticised um, for poor performances in the past, but I thought he was he definitely did his job. Kerno, it's just good again for me. I will say this until the end of the, for the rest, you know, until next week. You just got to get footy into him. Um, you can just tell he's he's still figuring out, you know, who he is again. It's it's really interesting to see. He had a, a solid opponent on him. I just wrote here. Just got to get the reps into him. Um, he kicked the ball into the space of Casbolt, second quarter, 15-13, which was nice. Um, he needed to take his time for that snap around the body, that set shot that he had in the second quarter with two minutes to go. But I hope that these things will come. Uh, it's really important, and it's low-key a, a big positive that we've been able to get, hopefully, you know, with next week, a month of footy into him. Because no different to Durden and, and Honey and whatnot, to, for Charlie to see, all right, this is the speed of the game. This is what I still can do. This is what I still aren't, am not able to do. And he can work on that, on that timing. Um, it's a big preseason for a lot of them, but for Charlie, it's special. If he can just reclaim, I don't expect him to be, again, that 60 goal a year forward that I was thinking that he was going to be, but I think he can be a really good contributor for us. And if he can reach those peak levels again, even better. Um, but for me right now, it's just about getting him through games and, you know, he's looking more, more comfortable as the weeks go on. Marking around the ground, he's, he's looking a lot more better. His forward craft is probably something that it, it might take some more time to come, but, you know, I gave him a pass mark for his game. De Koning, Kennedy and Walsh, De Koning, um, I thought he just got his job done. You know, again, he's another one who been injured for a, a big chunk of this year, needed to get reps into his experience and under his belt this year. And again, Sol Ruckman coming up against Scott Lysett and Peter Ladhams. These are solid bodies and, and solid players. So it's good for him. It's a really good experience for him. I think the expectations on him will come probably maybe not so harsh next year, but the year after that. So I'm still in that mentality with Tom. Get the reps under him. He competes hard. He, he started marking the ball around the ground. He, he provided a, an option behind the ball. So I gave him a bare pass mark. Um, Kennedy and Walsh, uh, these were our two best midfielders, I thought, on the day. Kennedy especially. Look, he started well. He pinned Houston in that first quarter with 10 minutes, 31 to go for his goal, which was great. Um, he had eight, eight, eight touches and a goal with four tackles in that first quarter. Whoops. <laughs> um, and I thought he played well I really did 28 touches 7 tackles he led the team along with Zach Fisher with um, 7 tackles and 8 marks and kicked a goal so I gave him a 7 Walsh not so different I gave him a 7 you know 13 possessions in the first quarter he was a man possessed it was it was great to see um, great pressure with Fisher in that passage of play to set up that Levi Casbolt goal um, the inside 50 to Charlie with 2 minutes to go in the second unfortunately Charlie Rushed it and, you know, kicked it around the body too early. But um, he works hard while well. she's third-year player. We often forget that. So uh, he really carried us along with Kennedy in that midfield. And I gave him a seven for his game. The bench, we got Lockio, Stocker, Fisher, and Honey. Lockio, I, I didn't mind his start. He was okay. He was working hard, getting in nice positions, kicking the ball nice and long. He had seven disposals in the first quarter. Um, beautiful inside 50 kick to Eddie Betts with 5.20 to go in the, in the second and then the, the Lockio of old uh, just started appearing again. You know, kicked the ball out in the full regulation kick in the third quarter with three minutes to go. Um, and I just, I, I don't know, just I just, I just I struggled with this one. Um, he didn't lay a tackle. He had the 19 touches at 84%, and that'll look nice on the stat sheet. Did he get his job done? Who cares? I don't know. It's, it's neither here or there. I... I put down a four, but I think it might be a five. I don't know. It's semantics at this point. I'll, I'll just leave it as a four for now. Stocker, another one that's um, finally got got himself some, some senior footy under his belt in 2021, which is important. Um, strong contested mark with in that contest with the Lear, which was really good. And it set up the build-up play in that first quarter. Um, I remember noting down an inside 50 kick to Charlie Kerno in the third with 11 minutes to go. And, you know... As you can tell, I stopped taking notes pretty much halfway through the third quarter when it got really ugly. Stocks was okay. 
he, I gave him just a bare pass mark for his game. Uh, Fisher, uh, this was interesting. A lot of people seemingly came after Fisher after the game. I don't think this was the game to do that with Zach Fisher. Um, last week, the, the criticism was like he didn't lay a tackle after laying five the week before, and and it looks like he really rectified that. You know, he had the 17 touches. Um, he had seven tackles. Um, he's not a brute, but you know, seven tackles is seven tackles. That's that's important. You know, I think that that really uh, that that's what he needed to do to respond. His pressure was good. He was lively early. He looks so much better in space when he's playing, sort of like on the wing, in the thick of it, in the link up play when he's at center bounces. It just looks better. Um, is he able to withstand the body heat of playing at center stoppages? I don't know. Um, but he definitely got better from the week before. The pressure was good. Um, I gave him a bare pass marker, but the seven tackles really won me over with him. Honey, very exciting. Very, very, very exciting prospect we've got here. He's got whatever that X factor thing is, he's got it. Um, nice goal from Corey Durden, as we saw in that second quarter. Uh, there was that unlucky goal that well, it was a behind. He, he sort of, he kicked it, but it hit his knee above his knee and, it was ruled a behind. Um, beautiful goal in the second with 13 to go. That read, that quick reaction time. Um, then he hit the post in the third quarter with 10.20 to go. He just looked lively. Um, I think we're in good hands once Eddie's gone. We're in good hands with, with Honey and, and whatnot. And hopefully Eddie can stick around at the football club and keep working with Honey and Durden and, and always as well. And I think we've got our small forward position sorted. Uh, the small forward position that a few years ago we needed to fill. I think we're in good hands now. So... Um, well done to Josh Honey, uh, and, and look, those are the those are the the player ratings. Um, tough game, very tough game. Um, Want to give a bit of a shout out to Doing a Bit, great company. My man Mark runs a company here, and um, we've got another giveaway today. For those of you that watch all the way through, you get rewarded. So a beanie this time with a little Doing a Bit package. Um, doing a bit, it's all about doing something for yourself. Uh, whatever it is, whatever you're working on, whether you're working on, uh, you know, your training habits, your eating, your reading, whatever goals you've got that you're doing, um, I want you to let me know in the comments. What are you working on? What are you doing a bit of? And uh, I will pick out one of the comments and I'll give you the package. We've given away uh, three of them so far, and we've got a, we've got a couple to come. So just put the hashtag doing a bit if you are interested in the prize. That's how I'll know. If you're not, no worries. You can just talk about the play ratings and what you thought of them higher or lower for any of the of these players and um, you know we'll go from there so with that one more week to go it's crazy that this has all flown by we're going to be missing it before we know it um, but obviously looking forward to watching the club get out there one more time so have a good one and go the Mighty Blues <laughs>